Hey everyone. So Spider-Man Far From Home is coming out super soon, right? Like, we're all really excited about it. Uh, some of us at least. I don't think it looks good. Uh, I was really excited about it until I saw the first and second trailers, and then I realized, oh boy, here we go, here we go again. Some, something tells me this ain't gonna be the greatest thing in the world, but we'll, we will give it a shot when it comes out. But a lot of the reason that I'm nervous comes from Spider-Man Homecoming, because I don't think that's a good Spider-Man movie. I think it's a good movie. I think it's enjoyable. I've watched it many times. I own it on Blu-ray. I like it. I, I really do enjoy the movie. But it's not a good Spider-Man movie because it doesn't understand Spider-Man. And here's what I mean by that. It doesn't understand what makes him tick as a character. They don't get his mission statement. They don't get the type of character arc he should have. They don't understand the fact that his actions have consequences and that's a huge part of his character. It doesn't get that. It pretends to. It acts like it does. It thinks it does, but it doesn't. So let me explain where this movie kind of missteps with the character. What's wrong with being? What's wrong with being? What's wrong with being confident? Uh -huh. First, they treat Uncle Ben like he doesn't exist. And that that's not to say that, oh, they don't talk about him by name or whatever, which they don't. And they don't need to. They don't need to be like, oh, man, ever since Uncle Ben died, I've had this guilt. But all they say is she is that Aunt May's been through a lot lately. And it's like, well, so have you, Peter. It's not like she's the only person that cared about Ben. Ben's death is why you're Spider-Man, isn't it? Maybe not in this. Maybe not here. Maybe not at all. But... In, Sp in Captain America Civil War, he says, if you can do the things that I can and you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. That clearly means to us that he could have saved Uncle Ben if he tried, but he didn't, and he carries the weight of that on his shoulders. He always will. That's why he's Spider-Man, so that he can never make that mistake again. But in Spider-Man Homecoming, he's Spider-Man so that he can impress the Avengers. Like, he doesn't carry that guilt anymore. He doesn't make any mistakes that harken back to him losing Ben. He doesn't dream about him. He doesn't think about him. He doesn't miss him. Nothing in the movie makes you think that Uncle Ben even existed. Because May could have been going through anything. She could have been getting fired. She could have been... Maybe her house got foreclosed or her car got repossessed. There's nothing specifically about Uncle Ben that drives his character in this movie. It's all just about, I have to keep hounding uh, Happy Hogan. I have to keep pressing on uh, Mr. Stark, I have to get out in the field again and be a hero. And that's cool and everything that he wants to be an Avenger. I mean, it's not too different from his comic origin where he tried to join the Fantastic Four almost immediately after becoming Spider-Man, but it's not his mission. He doesn't save the people of New York to be an Avenger. He does it to make Uncle Ben proud. And the movie entirely forgot that. And I just, it's it's just sorely missed when you, when if you have somebody like me that really cares about Spider-Man and wants him to be done well on screen, finally, and that's not there, it just kind of, it, it sucks, really. The suit and the AI. I get why the AI exists, because Spider-Man is a character that talks to himself a lot. He narrates a lot of the time. He's always got inner monologues going on. And if he's just narrating the movie, then that's kind of lame. But not really, because Spider-Man did it in Spider-Man 2, and it didn't come across as lame. And Actually, I think he's, he did it in all three movies. Iron Man did it at the end of Endgame after he died. His recording played, and it was like a narration that wasn't lame. He doesn't need his own version of Jarvis or Friday so that he can, you know talk. He could just be thinking to him. I don't know, it doesn't matter. But um or he could be recording it as a journal because at the beginning of the movie see he makes like a fan film of being an Avenger. That's not the point though. Uh I hate the suit because of the Iron Manization of the character. And I get it, right? The whole point of the movie is for him to learn that he's more than the suit. He can be a hero without it. Thing is, two things. He was a hero before he got it, and he was confident in himself. He didn't think he needed Iron Man to come help him or whatever. Remember in Civil War? And also, that's not a Spider-Man arc to have. Like, imagine if you were watching a super Superman movie, 
And he's like, I don't know if I can still be a hero without my billions of dollars and all my years of research and my combat training. It's like, that that's a Batman story arc. Imagine if you were watching a Captain America movie and he was trying to decide if he was worthy of being Thor. Like, if he could still wield the hammer after everything he's been through. That's a Thor arc. You can't just grab random arcs and stick them on other characters. Every character has a certain type of journey to go on. Like, they have to grow as characters evolve. They have to become better than they used to be. They have to learn from their mistakes. But not in the same way. Like, Thor had to... In Ragnarok, had to learn that his power came from within, even though it doesn't, and I'll get to that movie at, at, at some point. But that's not an arc that you would want Ant-Man to have, because it's not important to that type of character. That's not the journey he's on. That's not the character he is. So I don't like that... At all. Really. Spectacular, 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 spectacular. One thing that's universal across pretty much all Spider Man comics is that his actions have consequences. He messes up, people get hurt, and it's his fault. That's that adds to his character. It harkens back to Uncle Ben. Whenever he screws up and can't save somebody, he thinks of Ben. In this movie, all of his mistakes are either super minor or he gets bailed out. Like when he goes after, when he gets captured by the vulture and um, and dropped, and then the suit deploys a parachute and he almost drowns in it, and then Iron Man comes and saves him. It's like, okay, that can't keep happening. Then he knocks himself out uh, and gets stuck in damage control, and it doesn't really change anything. I mean, he's a little bit late getting to the Washington Monument, but he still saves everybody and nobody gets hurt at all. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. Nobody gets hurt. There's no consequences. You can take that part out of the movie and nothing's really any different. And then you have the fairy, where um, he almost gets everybody killed and it's like, how's he going to get out of this one? Iron Man's going to come save him, going to come bail him out. I feel like as powerful as his suit was, there should have been some way he could have saved everybody on the ferry. Maybe he just holds it together until everybody gets on lifeboats or whatever. Then he just lets the parts fall in the water. And then Iron Man comes and scolds him and he's like, hey, you can read me the right act all you want, but I saved all those people. I did it without you. But no, 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 no. Iron Man bails him out and he's like, you know, you went after the vulture and I told you not to and people were put in danger. Give me back the suit. But then at the end of the movie, he crashes a plane into the beach. That plane could have easily taken out Avengers Tower. It could have hit the Empire State Building. It could have hit the Statue of Liberty. It could have taken out anything in New York. But because it landed on a beach, because of luck and script writing, he gets not only his old suit back, but he gets a chance to be an Avenger full-time, and he gets offered the Iron Spider suit. And I'm just like, wait. Hold on a hot second there. Doesn't that kind of betray, you know, everything that was why you were angry with him at the beginning of the movie? What's the point of his actions having consequences only sometimes? I don't understand that. And now in this movie, since Iron Man's dead, it looks like it's trying to set Peter up to be the next Iron Man. Like, straight up have an iron suit, and I just, I don't, I already don't like the iron spider suit. And I don't like that he's wearing it in this movie. But we'll see what happens in like two weeks. I'll see if the movie's worth talking about, worth watching, worth remembering. And uh, we'll, I'll, I'll have my fingers crossed until then and we'll just we'll see how it goes. But uh, that's all I really wanted to say to you guys this time. And I'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>